Webinyama is one of the best draft prospects the NBA has ever seen. So I decided to simulate his career 100 times to find out how good he'll really be. This took over 200 hours of recording and tracking stats. So if you want to see more content like this, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. This takes a long time to make. So before I show you anything about Victor Webinyama's 100 careers, let's first break down the point system that I created that will accurately rank each one of his 100 careers from 1 to 100. So here's the point system right in front of you. And before you start asking questions, Questions, let me explain a few things. This point system is not an official way to rank players. If we already had something like that in the sports world, then we would have a definitive answer on who the greatest player of all time is. I'm sure a lot of you can look at this point system right now and see obvious flaws within it. As you can see, you are rewarded 300 points for winning an NBA championship. But as we all know, all rings aren't worth the same, and everyone has a different role when contributing to a championship. The main point is there are dozens of hypothetical situations that could equate to different point values. And for the making of this video, video and NBA history in general, it is very hard to quantify those point values. So even though this system can be seen as unfair, it's the best we can do when everyone's on the same playing field. So now that you understand how the point system works, it's time to give a complete breakdown of all 100 careers of Victor Webinyama. If there are any doubts about Victor Webinyama's career, they are mostly due to his ability to stay healthy. So let's go over what these 100 simulations had to say about this. In 100 simulations, Victor Webinyama played an average of 20 and a half seasons, which means Victor did an amazing job staying healthy for majority of these careers, considering the average NBA player's career is about four and a half years. There have also been only 10 players in NBA history to play 20 or more seasons. So for Victor to average that many seasons per career, that puts him in very elite company. The most seasons Victor played in one career was 24, which we all know no player in NBA history has ever done this. But even though Victor was able to play for a lot of seasons per career, this doesn't exactly answer how many games he missed per career. The least amount of games he played in one career was about 1,300, which rounds out to about 16 seasons. Now, if we take the total amount of games he potentially could have played in all 100 careers, and we subtract it by the amount of games he actually played, that gives us 14,701 games missed. This means Victor missed about 147 games per career, which comes out to about 1.8 seasons missed. To dig a little deeper into this stat, Victor missed on average 8.7% of his career. And to help you gauge that stat, here's a list of NBA legends, some NBA players today, and some injury prone players. And from looking at his percentage compared to the others, he's obviously not injury prone, so that's good enough for us. Let's reveal the first 10 of Victor Webinyama's careers. So Victor Webinyama's worst career comes in at 1,288 points, which is right in between DeMarcus Cousins and Marcus Gasol. So based off this career alone, it's looking really good for Victor Webinyama because we still have 99 more careers to go. Now, after revealing the other nine careers, they all average out to around 2,500 points which has him falling right around Reggie Miller range. And the best out of the first 10 careers is about 3,600 points. And again, these are the worst 10 careers of the 100. So I'd say Victor's off to a pretty good start. Victor Webinyama was selected number one overall by the San Antonio Spurs in the 2023 NBA draft. But that doesn't mean he was a Spur for life. In all 100 careers, Victor averaged about seven and a half years with the Spurs per career. We just saw that his worst case scenario is DeMarcus Cousins or Marc Gasol. And Victor's average is right under the usual NBA star who signed the first four years as a rookie and then stays another four years after getting a new contract. Because as you know, after those first four years, those young players become restricted free agents. But only 42 times out of the 100 did the Spurs decide to keep Victor after the first contract. Meaning that 58 times the Spurs didn't match the contract and let him walk. Also, only four times out of 100 careers did he play his entire career with the Spurs. Now, now let's take a look at every team he played for. Here's a list of the amount of seasons he played with each team for in all 100 careers. Now, as you can see, it takes a significant drop off after the Spurs, but that's only because he is guaranteed to be there for the first four years, which on average for Victor is about 20% of his career. Let's now reveal the next 10 careers. So here is the next wave of Victor's careers. And when I take the average from all 20 careers here, that gives him an average score of 3,400, meaning that the average career so far for Victor is Patrick Ewing. Our new high score is 4,800 which is approaching Kevin Garnett territory. As we saw from Victor in the Summer League, he is a total wild card, at least offensively. He seems to have all the tools being 7-5 with a handle and a jump shot, but it's clearly not all put together just yet. So let's go over the numbers and we'll start with points per game. The least amount of points he averaged in one career was 12.8 points per game. This is shockingly low when you hear that his average for all 100 careers was 20.6 points per game. And since we know that Victor on average played 20 and a half seasons, here is a list 
list of players that average over 20 points a game and play over 20 seasons. The most points per game he averaged in one year was 24.5, which is not that overwhelming. The least amount of rebounds he averaged for one career was 7.6 rebounds per game. This is pretty low for a guy who's 7'5", but his average over the course of all 100 careers isn't that crazy either, coming in at 10.36 rebounds per game. I will say, though, part of Victor's low rebounding numbers is due to his amazing longevity. And to prove that, here is a list of players that average over 10 rebounds a game while playing over 20 seasons. I don't have too much to share on assist and steals considering he was fairly mediocre in both, but I will say for the center position to average four assists a game, that's actually pretty impressive, considering only five centers in NBA history have ever done this. And the least amount of blocks he averaged in one career was 1.6. This is very close to his average across all 100 careers coming in at 1.9. There's not really any shot blockers who have played longer than 20 seasons, so here's a list of players that average at least 1.9 blocks per game while playing at least 15 seasons. Now let's go over his career totals. So here's the worst case scenario, and it doesn't really stack up that well. The most predictable part is him being 14th all-time in blocks, which is still very impressive for worst case scenario. The average one's looking pretty good, putting him at 6th in points, 6th in rebounds, and 6th in blocks all-time. Now that I'm reading that out loud, probably not as good as I thought. And here is the best case scenario where he is the number one scorer of all time. And he's also second in blocks, which is very understandable considering how far Akeem Olajuwon is away from everybody else. And after adding the next 10 best careers on the scale, Victor's new average is now 4,009, which puts him right around the Chris Paul range. Victor's new best career is about 5,200. This isn't much of a jump from the last career, but it's still Kevin Garnett territory. The all-star game in the last decade has become a joke, but when establishing your legacy, the amount of all-star appearances you have establishes a level of consistency. Here is a complete list of every amount of all-star appearances that Victor had over the course of all 100 careers. And a pretty crazy stat here, he was only a zero-time all-star one time through all 100 careers. The most common amount of all-stars he had was 17, and his average all-star appearances come out to around 14, which is impressive considering only 10 players in NBA history have ever done this. He was also able to be a 20-time all-star one time, which of course no NBA player has ever done that. Once again, we're probably not going to see a seismic jump with the average, but an average score of 4,300 should do just fine. And his new high is now 5,800, which puts him right in between Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Similar to the all-star appearances, the all-NBA teams are reserved for the best of the best. Here is a breakdown of the lowest, average, and highest amount of all-NBA teams he was able to make over the course of all 100 NBA careers. His lows are low, and his averages aren't that impressive, even though only 27 players have made five all-NBA first teams. He was also able to have one out of the 100 careers where he was a 13-time all-NBA first team member. When you put the averages of the all-NBA teams together, you can see he was selected to, on average, about 12 all-NBA teams per career, which is something only 11 players in NBA history can say. So let's go ahead and reveal the next 10 careers. The average has gone up to 4,700, which is semi-approaching Kevin Garnett territory. His new high is 6,300, which surpasses Hakeem Olajuwon, cementing him as one of the greatest centers of all time. Here is a list of the all-defensive teams he made at his worst, his average, and his best. Only making two all-NBA defensive first teams per career feels like a disservice to his actual defensive ability, but his highest amount of defensive first teams in one career was nine. Only four players have ever done that. In these next 10 careers, Victor was able to hit two benchmarks. His average score jumped right over 5,000, and his highest score is just over 7,000, which put him over Larry Bird, but still seems to be pretty far away from Shaq. Other than winning a championship, an MVP award will cement you in NBA history. Here is a list of the amount of MVPs he won and how many times he did it. Surprisingly, 23 times he was never able to secure an MVP. The most common amount was one, and the average came out to about two MVPs per career. But that still puts him in elite company as only 15 players in NBA history have won at least two MVPs. While it felt like he had a long way to go to catch up the Shaq, his new high of 7,637 disproves that. And his new average is approaching Kevin Durant territory at 5,400. As great of a defender Victor appears to be in real life and in this video, he seems to not be getting awarded for it. And as you can see here, 36 times out of 100 careers, he was not awarded with a single Defensive Player of the Year award. His average comes out to 1.6, which is nothing to brag about. But in 16 of the 100 careers, he was able to win at least four Defensive Player of the Year awards, which is something only two players in NBA history have ever done. We have 30 careers left left. Let's look at the next 10. Victor's average with the new 10 careers didn't take too much of a jump, but his new high did, putting him at 8,400 points. He is now creeping into GOAT conversations right in between Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant. Here is where stars become superstars, where legacies are defined. So how much did Victor contribute to winning basketball? 
Let's find out. Here is a list of every second round appearance from Victor Webanyama. And to be clear, to actually get an appearance, you have to play at least one second of NBA basketball during that series. On average, Victor made about 10 second round appearances per career. Although only 30 players in NBA history have ever done this, it's not that impressive considering some of the players you see on this list. He also never won a single career where he didn't make the second round. In fact, worst case scenario, he made four second round appearances. As for conference finals appearances, he yet again didn't go a single career without a conference finals appearance and he averaged about six conference finals appearances per career again it's not a crazy amount considering role players and dynasties but he somehow did manage to make 13 conference finals appearances in just two careers and that's something only four players in NBA history can say they've done so only five times out of all 100 careers did Victor Webanyama not make a single finals appearance his average comes out to four finals appearances which isn't bad at all there's not a fun stat on that but there's only been 13 players to make at least 10 finals and here is the most important part of it all winning championships in only 13 out of the 100 careers he was not able to win an nba championship the most common amount of championships he won was two which actually turned out to be his average also just for fun i decided to go back into the footage and find every single championship that he won for every single team over the course of all 100 careers even though he only won an average of two championships his finals mvp stack close to comparison averaging about two finals mvps per career which is something only 12 players in nba history have ever done victor webanyama is now knocking on the door of GOAT status with a new high of 9,624 points, putting him right behind Michael Jordan. The average got itself to a little over 6,000, so now he's about a Kim Olajuwon on average. Not too bad. This is what every NBA player dreams of, to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And in Victor's case, he was a Hall of Famer 95 out of 100 careers. And just to give some perspective, here is a list of current NBA players today and their chances of becoming a Hall of Famer based off basketball reference. Over the course of 100 careers, Victor Webanyama had an average score of 6,560. And at the very top of this scale, that is Victor Webanyama's best career. And this best career gave him a grand total of 11,824 points, giving him the highest score of any NBA player. So there you have it. All 100 of Victor Webanyama's careers explained and broken down. But if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. And until next time, one finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love. Peace out.